Blast me to Bermuda. It's time for another Mad Merlin's video. Hello and welcome back to another video. This is the final installment of my Yu-Gi-Oh! Speed Jewels GX Jewel Academy Box um, deck overviews. So we will look at our very last deck and at the end we'll even have a quick look at the extra cards, mainly focusing on the skills we get in there as we don't get a lot of cards that can benefit them as decks. So, as I mentioned in a few videos ago, I have saved the best, or what I think is the best, till last. If you haven't guessed it already, it's Axel Brody's deck. So this is um, a burn deck, pretty much, and runs really well as the um, uh, volcanic cards. So, like I said, um, we will run through the skills, the cards, the combos, strengths and weaknesses, and any modifications. So, first up we got Blaze Accelerator Deployment. So once per turn, you can change the name of a Blaze Accelerator control to Try Blaze Accelerator. This skill can be used twice per duel. So, um, if you are familiar with these volcanic cards, you know that Try Blaze Accelerator is important to bring out your big bad monster. And having a skill that allows you to change a regular Blaze Accelerator to Try Blaze Accelerator in name only is a pretty good card. Um, only having one Blaze Accelerator in the deck is a kind of a downer, but I will get to that in the uh, Modifications and Strengths and Weaknesses section. Um, next we have Volcanic Cannon. So you can, once per duel, send a face at Tri Blaze. You control Special Summon Volcanic Doomfire from your hand, deck or graveyard, ignoring the conditions. Your opponent takes no effect damage until the, the turn you activate this skill. So getting your big bad monster out pretty quick is nothing too bad to be sniffed out. So pretty good strong skill, I think. Sending your Tri Blaze Accelerator. So if you are playing double up format, both of these skills are going to be checked, used in pretty much the same turn. So if you have a Blaze Accelerator, change its name, summon out your Volcanic, Doomfire. Pretty good skills for a pretty good deck. So speaking about Volcanic Doomfire, here he is as the big bad of your deck. So it cannot be normal summoned or set, must be special summoned from your hand by sending Triblaze Accelerator you control to the graveyard. During your opponent's battle phase, the attack position monsters your opponent controls must attack this card if able. When this card destroys a monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, destroy as many monsters your opponent controls as possible. And if you do, inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each monster destroyed by this effect. So, like I said, he is the big bad of the Volcanic deck. Forcing your opponent to attack it every time is kind of good, so your opponent will most likely be skipping the battle phase unless they've got something that can trump this guy. But once he's out, he is literally there to eat away at your opponent's life points, especially with that ability to destroy as many monsters as possible and then inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each card. Next we have Blazing Apache, who is just a normal fire type monster. 1850 def attack with zero defense. And then we have Charcoal Apache, who is a level one fire monster, who has 100 attack and 2100 defense. So the Apache series are pretty nice cards. You have Apache, Char uh, Blazing Apache, Charcoal Apache, and then Woodwalk Apache which all have various different um, stats. Starts off strong attack, low defense, and then, as we see here, becomes low attack, strong defense. Next we have UFO Turtle. So this guy is much like Crowler's Giant Rat. He allows you to, once he's destroyed, search and special summon a fire monster with 1500 less attack in attack position from your deck. So really you'll be using him to bring out some of your um, lower leveled attack um, volcanic cards. 
Spirit of the Flames, so it cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned by banishing a fire monster from your graveyard, and it will gain five three hundred attack during your battle phase only. So it becomes two thousand attack on your turn, and has a bonus of becoming being a special summon by banishing one of your fire monsters. So if you've already sent a fire monster to the graveyard to trigger a card effect, you can then send it from the graveyard to the banished zone and bring this guy out. At level 4, 1700, he's not too bad. Next we have Raging Flame Sprite, who back in, my, back in the day, he was one of the most annoying cards you could get. You could make, basically make it so your opponent could never attack and then also make this guy invincible and just win the game because he's effect. This card can attack directly. If this card inflicts damage by a direct attack, it gains a thousand attack. And yeah, that just goes and goes and goes and goes. So he starts off at only 100 attack, but after a single direct attack, he's up to 11, then 21, 31, etc. This guy, plus the spell card, level limit, area B, and the trap card, gravity bind, which meant all level 4 or higher monsters could not attack. So this guy being level 3 was just free to go direct attack, direct attack, direct attack, direct attack. And there was very little you could do to stop it. There's um, also paired with cards that... Um, Return him from the field to the hand to save him from being destroyed as well. And there was also a few cards that stopped um, him from being destroyed, which is pretty nasty, pretty good. So a really endless combo of one direct attacks, really. Next up, we got two copies of Volcanic Shell. So this is an integral part to the whole Volcanic mechanic. So once per turn, you can pay 500 life points, add a volcanic shell from your deck to your hand. You must have this card in the graveyard to activate and resolve this effect. So two copies of that. It's not the biggest card, but like I said, it's important to some of the combos. Definitely good thing that you have two of this in deck. I probably wouldn't run it at three because then you're just filling up space. Next, we have a volcanic blaster. So when this card is destroyed by Rattlers at the graveyard, place a volcanic monster from your deck on top of it. So helping you bring out the volcanic monsters that you want, especially seeing as there are quite a few of these cards only at one copy. Um, I would say probably a good one to double up on if you want to search out a specific volcanic monster. Other than that, he is a pretty good level three monster. Next, we have one of the heavy hitters of the deck. Other than Doomfire, it is Volcanic Hammerer. So once per turn, during your main phase, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the number of Volcanic Monsters in your graveyard times 200. This card cannot attack the turn you activate the effect, this effect. So a pretty good burn effect if you've already ditched quite a few of your Volcanic Monsters from the effects of spell cards, etc you are going to be dealing quite some severe damage. Even having just five of your volcanic cards in the graveyard is going to be a thousand damage to your opponent. Okay, you don't get to attack this turn, but still, you've dealt a quarter of your, your life points, your opponent's health to them from one effect. 2400 attack as well is pretty good for a level five monster. Uh, and we're Australian then. And he has 1500 defense as well. Next, your um, level 4 beat stick for the, deck, for the deck is Volcanic Rocket. When this card is summoned, you can add a Blaze Accelerator card from your deck to your deck or graveyard to your hand. So this is the only card in the deck, I believe, that allows you to specifically search out Blaze Accelerator. Definitely worth getting a second copy in your deck. I would possibly straight up remove the Apaches and maybe even UFO Turtle. Just focus purely on Volcanic cards if you can. Like I said, 1900 and the ability to search out Blaze Accelerator is one of the best cards for the deck. 
Finally, we have Royal Firestorm Guards. So this is a level four Pyro Monster 1700. If this card is normal summoned, target four Pyro Monsters in your graveyard, shuffle them into your deck and draw two cards. So I, this is actually a um, Axel card as the um, Dual Links game has him with a um, speech uh, bubble for the um, summoning of the card and its effect. The um, good thing about this is if it's late game drawn, you can shuffle up those four of your Pyro Monsters when you really got to your deck and then draw two extra cards. So three draws and recycling some of your lost cards. Um, definitely good at one. I think it's one of the few cards that I wouldn't double up on, but it's still a pretty good card. Okie dokie, let's move on to the spell cards. So we've got a pretty monster heavy deck and we only have five spells. So we have Salamander, which is an equipment card that can only be equipped to a fire monster. That monster gains 700 attack. Personally, I'd remove this as I consider it more a Joey card. But it's still pretty good for the deck. It's a nice 700 point boost to your fire types. Uh, Twister, quick play for paying 500 life points, target a spell trap on the field and destroy it. Pretty good. It's a rather standard sort of card to be used. And yeah, it could be pretty useful in the volcanic deck, I believe, I think. So next we have Blaze Accelerator. So this is where your um, volcanic shells come in handy. So you can target one monster your opponent controls, send a pyro monster with 500 or less attack from your hand to the graveyard. And if you do, destroy the monster. Your monsters cannot attack to turn you activate its effect. So a free destruction for the sacrifice of one of your low level monsters. And with your volcanic shell having the ability to pay 500 life points and um, add another one from your deck to your hand, it's a pretty good effect. And the good thing is you can use it multiple times per turn. But you do have the um, handicap of not being able to attack. And next we have Tri Blaze Accelerator. So activate by sending a phase up Blaze Accelerator you control to the graveyard. During your main phase, you can target one monster your opponent controls, send a Pyro monster from your hand to the graveyard, and if you do, destroy that target. And if you do that, you inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Your monsters card attack, turn you activate this effect. So not only is it the same effect as your regular Blaze Accelerator, but it can be any Pyro monster, no limited on 500 attack. You have the added bonus of dealing 500 damage, but you also do have that drawback of no attacks. Still, it's a really nasty card. Next we have Wildfire. So you pay 500 life points, destroy all Blaze Accelerator cards you control. And if you do, destroy as many monsters on the field as possible. Then special summon one Wildfire token, which is a level three Pyro Fire monster with a thousand attack and defense in attack position. Your monsters cannot attack to turn you activate this card. So it's pretty good. It's basically a wipe out the entire field and then special summon a little flame token. So it gives you something to tribute if you have a high level monster in your hand. And here we have the last three cards of the deck, the trap cards. So Michizuri, which is when a monster is sent from the field to the graveyard, even during the damage step, target another card on the field and destroy it. So this is pretty good. It allows you to um, send a card you control, or when you lose a card you control, you can then destroy another card on the field. And it says card, so it doesn't have to be monsters, which is good as if you um, sent your Blaze Accelerator to activate your Tri-Blaze Accelerator, you can activate this then, and then destroy one card on the field. So it is, yeah, it is targets one monster on the field. But yeah, you can still send a spell or trap card to activate. 
Next we have Covering Fire. So during damage step, if an opponent's monster attacks their monster, target a face-up monster you control that is not being attacked. The attacked, attacked monster gains attack equal to the attack of the other monster during damage step. So pretty good. It allows you to boost the attack of your uh, weaker monsters by having your backed up other monsters. So it can turn even a low level monster into a near impossible to defeat beast. And finally we have Firewall. So when your opponent declares a direct attack, you can banish a pyro monster from your graveyard and get attack. Once per turn during your standby phase, pay 500 life points or destroy this card. So a pretty nasty little card. Um, banishing one of your pyro monsters to um, negate an attack. Um, it has to be a direct attack, so you can't do it while you have something out. It is still a pretty good effect to help protect your life points. Uh, you do have the handicap of paying 500 points to keep it active, but I think early game it's well worth it. So, there we have it. So, um, strengths, it's a brilliant, um, burn deck. It does what it says on the tin, pretty much. You've got lots of destruction, lots of burn power. It's, it does work really well. You got quite a few ways of getting your big cards out and with your skills, you got a, Quite a few ways of making sure you got Blaze Accelerator out as well. Weaknesses. Much like with the uh, Crowler deck. I don't see many weaknesses to this deck. You could say only having one Blaze Accelerator in your deck is a weakness. But you've got the skill to back you up. You, uh, if you're not using the Blaze Accelerator deployment skill to get your Tri Blaze out quicker, it's pretty. Um, it's really your fault for um, running only one copy of each of the other cards. If you want to. Um, Use the Volcanic Cannon of one and bring out your Volcanic Doomfire quicker. I would definitely say double up on both the Tri Blaze cards, uh, both the Blaze Accelerator cards. Um, so yeah, really there is very few weaknesses in this deck. Modifications: a second copy of just regular Blaze Accelerator is a pretty good way to go um i would probably double up on rocket maybe blaster as well uh probably ditch like i said earlier the impaches and turtle they're not necessary for the deck really they're just there to give you some extra fire cards but really you want to try and focus purely on volcanic cards a second doom fire if you, like me, have the Secret Rare version from the um, Secret Rare cards. But definitely running two rockets so you've got access quicker to the Blaze Accelerator is definitely a good way to go. Um, again, personal preference, I would remove Salamandra and then throw in the extra Blaze Accelerator. So there we have that. Um, so moving on, let's have a quick look at the extra cards. So these are the bonus cards you get in the Jewel Academy box. We've already covered a few in the um, Jesse Anderson video. So our first new skill is the Energizing Elements. So you can declare Fire, Water, Earth or Wind. This turn monsters with that declared attribute gain 500 attack and lose 400 defense. Also, any battle damage they inflict is halved. If you control no monsters to the declared attribute, this card is flipped over. So this is a skill for Bastion, and basically gives you free access to 
one of the um, element specific field spells that boosts attack and lowers defense. There is of course the handicap that all damage is halved and if you don't control a monster with the declared attribute you flip this card over and then I believe you can't activate it again. And then yeah, flip this card over when you activate this skill. So yeah, it's not a once per um, jewel sort of thing. It's pretty good. So we will be getting more Bastion cards in the um, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX midterm Speed Jewels expansion, which includes a deck for Jaden, Cyrus, the Paradox Brothers, and Bastion. Speaking of Cyrus, we have one for the one for him with Room for Growth. So during your main phase, you can increase the attack of one level three or lower monster you control by 300 times its level. Until the end of this turn, then flip this card over at the end of the turn you activated this skill. So yeah, I believe this is a, um, oh yeah, you can use it multiple times it looks like. It's basically, um, Cyrus's deck runs a lot of low level monsters anyway, so boosting their attacks is a good thing to have. So you're going to be doing at least at least 600 boost because most of these void monsters are, I think, level two. But most will get a, free, a 900 point boost for being level three, etc. And the good thing is it does it is limiting to only target those level three or lower monsters. The final skill we have is I've got Dino DNA. So we got um, Hasselberry's skill here. So during each of your draw phases, you will gain 200 life points. During a draw phase, if you draw a dinosaur monster, you can normal, for your normal draw, you can reveal it, place it on the bottom of your deck, then draw one card. So once per turn, during your main phase, you can make one dino monster you control, gain 200 attack until the end of this turn. A pretty handy skill, but with not many dinosaurs, in the speed duel deck, you won't be running a Hassleberry deck at the moment. If, like me, you already have the Weevil and Rex Raptor um, deck, you will most likely already have access to quite a few Dino decks, Dino cards, and you could easily build up a Hassleberry deck pretty easily. So yeah, at the start of the duel, you flip this card over, and there is no ending to it. So yeah, you gain 200 points each time you draw, which is pretty good. Then the added bonus of a bonus draw. And a third bonus of you can make one uh, one dino gain 200 attack until the end of the turn. So looking at the extra cards, we get quite a few um, low level monsters, which work well into... Um, The duelist that has runs a low level deck. We also have Big Koala here, which is um, one of Chumley's ace monsters. We got Don Zalug, who um, I believe is one of Chaz's cards, as he um, claims the Dark Scorpions after defeating them as Dark Riders. Um, Apprentice Magician is kind of an odd one. I mean. It'd be more useful in a magician deck, but I think you should be able to find use for it. Um, putting counters on cards is always a good thing. We then have Des Kangaroo, which works with Big Koala to make Master of Oz. We got Gyroid, so we got at least one card here for Cyrus. Black Brachius, so we got one card here for Hasselberry. And Hydro Get On, so we've got one card here for um, Bastion. We also have an extra toon version of Ancient Gear Golem. So this would be an ideal um, card to use for Pegasus, I believe, in the duel where Pegasus fights um, Crowler and Bonaparte in Season 2. He um, con takes control of Ancient Gear Golem and turns it into this, basically. Then we have Sphere Karibo, so I believe this guy's good for your um, ritual decks, I think. Yes, uh, you can banish this card from your graveyard as one of the, your monsters required for a ritual summon. We've already looked at Master of Oz, and then we have the V to Z Dragon Catapult Cannon. So in my Chaz 
Um, video, I did mention that if you have the Battle City box, you can take the XYZ cards from the Kyber deck and put them into the Chaz deck, and then you can add this card in as well, giving you a rather nasty little um, boss monster. So he must be special summoned from your extra deck by banishing the above materials. Then once per turn, you can target one card your opponent controls, banish it. Also, when this card attacks an opponent's monster, you can change the battle position of that monster. Combining the effects of the XYZ and the VW. So we have Book of Moon, Fusion Weapon, which would be a good card to throw into the Jaden deck for these low-level fusion monsters. It was used by Alexis in the anime on Cyberblader, but Cyberblader is a level 7 now, I believe, so I'm not too sure how she actually managed to get away with that. Uh, we've got Moki Moki Smackdown, which goes well with the Hourglass of Courage and Moki Moki. And then we got Ojama Country, so we've got an extra copy of the Chaz skill, which gives you this as a freebie. So an extra copy will be good if you run a pure Ojama deck. Justy Break, which will be good in either the Chaz or Jaden deck, as long as you control um, only normal monsters and your opponent declares an attack, you can destroy all monsters, attack position monsters your opponent um, has. Rising Energy, so discard a card, target face up monster, it gains 500 attack, 1500 attack this turn, pretty good. Floodgate Trap Hole, when your opponent summons a monster, change that monster's face down to position monster, defense position, and that monster cannot change its battle position. Then I got just a few cards that I've pulled out of the um, Speed Jewels box for modifying decks. So we got um, some good cards for a Ojama deck and for an XYZ deck for Chaz. So there we have it. That has been the deck overview for the Axel Brody deck. And that um, brings my coverage of the Speed Jewels Dual Academy box to a final close. So I hope you found all these videos interesting. If you would like to, I will gladly do them for the other Speed Jewel decks in the um, Speed Jewel series. So that's all the eight from Battle City and all the other multi-deck multi boxes. So you've got your starter deck one and two which had yugi kaiba joey ishizu mai and pegasus then there was the pegasus versus yugi box and the bakura versus marik box and the rex versus weevil box and then of course i have plenty of other speed jewel cards so if you'd like to see more speed jewel coverage on the channel please let me know also, if you'd like to see any other types of videos on my channel, please let me know in the comments down below. So finally, all that's left for me to do is to say thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. If you'd like to help the channel out, there's of course my affiliate link for Curtain Games, my Buy Me A Coffee page, social medias and my eBay page. So, I'll see you next time for more mad content. Goodbye.